Monday morning and it's wonderful to be with you today and as I promised I will be talking to you today about dreams and dream interpretation. I asked people to send me their dreams so that we could interpret them and so after teaching today I will interpret dreams next week because I've received quite a few. I don't need any more guys because I'm not going to be able to get two more. So thank you very much for those that have sent me the dreams and I'm very excited to be able to help you to be able to interpret them. But I just want to remind you that our greatest interpreter is always the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father God, I want to thank you. I'm just checking the, the, the volume. Father, I want to thank you for this wonderful day. I want to thank you that people are hungry and thirsty after you, that they want to grow, they want to know more. And I want to thank you for crystal clear explanation. I want to thank you, Lord, that it will be easy to understand, that it will be clear to understand. I pray over the sound waves. I take authority over any interferences. I pray over my voice today that I will not strain my voice. And I thank you for just such an anointing. Holy Spirit brood over every person. The Spirit of the Lord for the prophetic edge. The Spirit of wisdom to be able to get the heart of what you're saying. Heaven's perspective. The Spirit of knowledge. The Spirit of revelation. The Spirit of might. The Spirit of truth, Father. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. The Spirit of counsel and the Spirit of the fear of the Lord. Thank you that you are brooding in this place. And thank you that people will be equipped today, that they will have clarity of understanding and that they will be excited to be able to do what you've called us all to do in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Well, friends, it's wonderful to be with you. And I'm going to start by saying this. Dream interpretation comes from the Holy Spirit. That's where it comes from does not come from our mind, from our thinking, from the ways of this world, the logic of this world. It comes as a gift from the Holy Spirit. So the first thing I want you all to do right now is just to say, Holy Spirit, we really would like to be able to interpret dreams, your dreams. Will you give us the gift of revelational knowledge so that we can interpret the Holy Spirit? Thank you for that. Amen. Okay, so the first thing I want you to understand, the Holy Spirit within us, who sits in our spirit man, as I've described so often here in our spirit man, speaks to us through our bodies. He speaks to us through our imagination or our heart, and that is how we get a picture, a vision, or a dream. Now, a vision is something that we get when we're awake during the day. We can go into a trance and get a vision. But the truth of the matter is a vision means that we are aware of what's going on around us and then we receive um, something in our imagination, in the canvas of our imagination, which comes from the Holy Spirit and gives us a glimpse of something he's trying to communicate with us. The difference between a dream and a vision is in the one you're asleep and the other one you're awake, but they're basically the same gift. Then he speaks into our emotions and our feelings and that's where we get our perception from, our feeling from, where we pick up words of knowledge in our, in, in our emotions from. Then he speaks into our thoughts and our intellect and that's when he draws scripture and he reminds us of scripture or he reminds us of um, a song that we've once learned and then he gives us a prophetic unction through our own thoughts. And then he touches our flesh and we get a word of knowledge or something like that where we get the feeling within our own body of what somebody else is experiencing. And so he uses us to communicate with us what he wants, but he is within us speaking to us. That's the first thing I want you to know. The second thing I want you to know is it is vital in this time and in this era that we learn how to interpret dreams. If you are a seer, you are a prophet, that is able to see mostly through your imagination or from your vision realm. And that means that you're a dreamer as well. But friends, I want you to know this. The same with prophecy and the same with interpreting tongues. We cannot be the one that gets the message and interprets it every time. Because that leaves huge space for error and deception. You have to understand that many people don't know how to interpret a dream. So they interpret it literally the way that it is and they then give information. I dreamt about Joe So last night. I dreamt he was killed in a car crash. Hello Joe So, I dreamt about you. You were killed in a car crash. What have you just done? You brought fear. 
And that is not the interpretation of that dream. And so please, whatever you do, do not literally through your own intellect and knowledge, interpret your dream and then follow through with your dream and have the end results of what you think it means. It is a dangerous place. And I want to say that specifically to people that dream regularly. Don't be your own interpreter. Because many people have a dream, respond to that dream, do all kinds of things according to that dream. And at the end of it, it doesn't happen the way they thought it does. They get hope to food and they blame God for it. But God, you told me, no friend, God gave you a message. You misinterpreted the message and then you followed through on what you thought. That is your hope deferred on your own thinking. Vital that we understand this. Okay, now the Bible says, in the last days, Acts 2 verse 17 to 18, and we know we're in the last days, and that's why we are getting people having so many dreams and visions. I will part my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit and they will prophesy. So we see that visions and dreams and prophecy are linked together because they're all prophecy. It says in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 3, But the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouragement and comfort. That's the thing, second thing I want you to know about this. I think it might be the third thing. That the point is that when we bring a message, be it through a vision, be it through a dream, or be it, be it through a word of prophecy, its aim is to strengthen, encourage, and comfort. And if it's not strengthening, encouraging, and comforting, either you're misinterpreting it wrong, or it wasn't from God. Now, in Luke 15, verse 4 to 9, we read that passage of scripture where Jesus is interpreting things. And I want you to understand that. When he spoke to the farmers, he spoke about farming. When he spoke to the women, he spoke about housework. When he spoke to the fishermen, he spoke about fishing. But all of these parables were bringing a message. So visions and dreams are a parable. They are a story. And just like when he spoke to the fishermen about making them fishers of men, he was saying to them, I want to equip you and I want to teach you. <coughs> in a language that they could understand. He couldn't speak to them about sweeping a house because they weren't cleaning up a house. Sorry. <coughs> So Jesus is always going to speak to us in dreams and visions in a way that we can understand it. It's a familiar language to us. Dreams are not spooky or mystical, but simple, uncomplicated stories. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Now just Oh, I take authority over this today. Take authority. Please excuse me. <laughs> this is obviously information that's important for you to hear. Because I'm really feeling an onslaught here. Okay. Now, just like when we are reading a book or reading a story, adjectives create an atmosphere that are really beautiful and exciting and take you into the story at a greater level. In the same way, dreams, they, in, in a dream or vision, there's an atmosphere being created that we have to understand. It. For example, listen to this. I'm going to give you some descriptive words. It says this. On a cloudless, quiet, starlit, crispy, cool winter's night, in the middle of June, she climbed in a red, sleek, new, shining car. Now that sounds very exciting because it sets a scene. But friends, what was that really about? What was that description about? About three things. It was about the lady, it was about a cold night, and it was about her red car. 
So we've always got to take our dream to its simplest form. Don't get caught up on every single word or every single picture. What is the simplest form of the dream? The Bible says that the things of God are so simple a child can understand it. It only gets complicated when we overthink it here. When the Holy Spirit is speaking, it is incredibly simple. So I want to say to every person who wants to know how to interpret dreams, it's vital that from this second onwards, you never try and interpret it through your worldly logic again. Because it doesn't come into agreement with heaven's perspective. And we have to look for the very simplest thing. Now, all that description was about a cold night, a woman, and her red car. So everything else is about those three things. And that's what you need to focus in on. It doesn't matter how many other details are there. Those are the things you have to focus in on. And you have to ask yourself these questions when you're interpreting a dream. Who, when, what, why, and how. And so in the beginning of interpreting dreams, it's really important to write those little questions down. Who was the dream about? When did it happen? What was it about? Um, and why? So that you've got your little guideline on how to interpret the dreams. Now, in the same way with a dream or vision, there can be a lot of adjectives in the picture form. But we have to take it down to the simplest form to find the message. To be able to interpret Holy Spirit dreams, you have to be full of the Holy Spirit. You have to be a worshipper that is regularly filling yourself up with the Holy Spirit. Why, friends? Because otherwise you're going to rely on your intellect and your logic. You know, there's, there's on Facebook, there's uh, dream interpretation pages. And I listen to people with dreams and the way they interpret it. And I think, what are you talking about? That is not the interpretation at all. And then people are confused. And they don't know what God is saying. And they don't know where they're going. We have to ask Him for clarity. <coughs> we have to be full of the Spirit. And we have to rely on the interpretation of the Holy Spirit to be able to interpret what the Holy Spirit is saying. Remember, it's His message. You may be the vessel. The message is His message. <coughs> the next thing, it is vital that we are full of the Word of God because so much of interpreting dreams through the Holy Spirit goes back to the Word. There are many books out there, many New Age books out there, many intellectual books out there, many psychological books out there that will give you some form of an interpretation to a dream. But I want to say this to you. They could be interpreting soulish dreams. But when it comes to prophetic dreams, it's only through the Holy Spirit and through the Word of God. Because He takes everything back to the Father, He takes everything back to Jesus, and He's never going to go beyond that. Um, it says Daniel 5 verse 13 to 14. <clears throat> so Daniel, because remember Daniel was a man that could interpret so many dreams and he saved all of the magicians from being killed because he could interpret dreams. So Daniel was brought before the king and the king said to him, Are you Daniel, one of the exiles my father the king brought from Judah? I have heard that you, that the spirit of the Lord is in you and that you have insight, intelligence and outstanding wisdom. So how do we interpret dreams from the spirit of the Lord within you and the spirit of wisdom that gets imparted into your life? Psalm 119 verse 11 and, and 169 says, I have hidden my word in my, your, I'm sorry, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. May you cry, may my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me the understanding according to your word. <clears throat> and it's really important that we have submissive hearts that are submitted to leaders and that are accountable because it's very, very easy for seers to become puffed up. They feel superior. They feel mystical. They come across as mystical and people think, oh, they live in another realm. No, they don't. They just have a gift that brings heaven to earth through the visual area and therefore it's very important that they are submissive and accountable and that they also get other people to every now and again get a perspective of am I still hearing God. I want to say this to you again friends, the greatest lie in the end times is deception. 
The enemy comes masquerading as light. <clears throat> we do not know when we are deceived. We never know when we are deceived. Every human being has blind spots. It is vital that we have people that come to us and speak truth to us, even if it offends us. And that help us to see our own blind spots, friends. And you do not know if you're deceived. And you can, being in deception, follow a path that the enemy has led you on. That you go right out of the will of God, thinking it's God. Thinking you're doing what God's told you to do. But you have been completely taken off with deception. It's vital that you continuously hold yourself accountable and that you continuously bounce things off people that are more mature than you to be able to make sure that you're still on the right path. Now, he operates through all of us. That's why we've got to be full of his spirit and full of word knowledge. <clears throat> it's really important that we establish, is this a prophetic dream? Now, when we're dreaming, because we are made up of body, soul, and spirit, we can have soulish dreams. And soulish dreams mean that they are emotional dreams. What's been going on in the day before, what's been going on in your emotion, will result in an emotional or soulish dream. It is a regurgitation of what you are emotionally living. So when you're in emotionally in chaos and turmoil and you're dreaming about being attacked, coming under attack, about being criticized and broken down, that is not a prophetic dream. That is a dream that your emotions are crying out in your sleep because of the pain they've experienced during that day. You can also have demonic dreams. And demonic dreams happen when you've opened the door to the demonic realm and you've watched something that's evil. If you're going to watch pornography, you're going to have a regurgitation of Pervert, perverted dreams. If you're going to watch horror movies, you're going to have opened the door to the demonic and you're going to have demonic dreams. And so it's really important that we have to understand what you open your gates to is what you're going to regurgitate at night. And that is why, are you having a soulish dreams? Now, when you go to a psychologist, they can tell you what your soulish dreams are because it's a regurgitation of what's operating in your soul. And they can tell you you're dreaming this because that's what's happening in your soul. If you're having a demonic dream and you, you've been bombarded by demons in your dream, it's because there's an open door and you've got to go and shut that door. But when you're having a prophetic dream, it's because you're full of the spirit, because you're full of the word and you've said, God, will you speak to me so that I can know what your plans are? And he never does anything without speaking to his prophets first. And he is pouring out his spirit speaking to as many people as possible in this time and so cleanse your the bible says who can ascend the hill of the lord he has clean hands and a pure heart cleanse your soul cleanse yourself at night time before you go to bed do not watch something that 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 you fall asleep watching something that is offline fill yourself up with the spirit ask the holy spirit to flood you ask him to fill you and then dedicate your canvas to him and say god you are the master of my canvas, of my mind, and I thank you that your visions and your dreams will fill my imagination tonight. That's how we receive prophetic dreams and visions. And then, friends, ask him, as I led you in the prayer beforehand, ask him for interpretation. For many, many years, I asked the Holy Spirit that I wanted to be able to interpret visions and dreams. And then suddenly one day I realized that he had given me the ability. Now, I will share a little bit at the end on how it works for me. It doesn't mean that's how it's going to work for you, but that's how it works for me. In Jeremiah 23 verse 32, it says, Indeed, I am against those who prophesy false dreams, declares the Lord. They tell them and lead my people astray with their reckless lies. Yet I did not send my point, my point yet I did not send or appoint them they do not benefit these people in the least declares the Lord and so friends we can take a solar stream think we've heard God interpret it ourselves phone people get all kinds of confusion happening rush to the mountains and it wasn't God at all because it is possible to prophesy out of false dreams or we can have a true prophetic dream but the wrong interpretation. And so it's really, really important that we know what God is saying, how he's saying it, and what he is saying to us. 
Dreams and visions operate the same way as prophetic words, the word of knowledge, the word of no wisdom, and the discerning in spirits. Number one, they are there to exhort, encourage, and comfort. Number two, they are directional. Number three, they can bring correction. Number four, they deal with foundational issues in our lives and in the lives of the church. And number five, they do warn us and prepare us about things to come. Now, first of all, establish, is this a prophetic dream or is this an emotional dream? How do you establish this? What's going on in your life? Is it just a regurgitation of what's going on? Have you opened the door to something evil? Or do you feel God is speaking to you because you've been asking him for prophetic dreams? If it is that, remember it will always come to exhort comfort and courage. And it will come to bring correction. And it will come to bring direction. It never changes from that which God initially set out for it to me. Now... Once you've established that it is a prophetic dream, the first thing you need to do is record as much of it as possible. Record as much as possible because once you've recorded it, you've got all the details. Now you'll find with emotional dreams and with other dreams, that's a lot of black and white, it's very confusing and it's not very clear. But when it comes to prophetic dream, it's usually clear. There's a lot of color, there's a lot of detail. As I said, lots of adjectives. But it also doesn't leave you. You keep remembering it. It keeps coming back. And the quicker you write it down, the more detail you will remember. So write down as much as you possibly can or record it for yourself. Then take it to its simplest form. Remember, take away all the information that's not relevant. I had a dream. It was about a house. It was a lot of trees. It was about a long driveway. It was about 20, 40 million cars coming up and down. What's that dream about? A house. It's about a house. I had a dream about a house. Write down the, the whole profile of that dream or the whole message in that dream is about the house. And that's really important to see. Simplest form, the basic message. Then pray and ask the Holy Spirit for an interpretation. Don't just think what you logically think. Because I'm telling you now, this is the wisdom of this world. This is the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. And if you're working it out here, it's not going to be truth. Then the next thing is, um, also, interpret it through Scripture. Interpret through the Holy Spirit. Interpret through Scripture. That means, where did God talk about it? When did He first mention it? And it's usually the first time He mentions it, that there's some message in that. And then there's a whole lot of self-explanatory in a dream. For example, a crow means a scavenger. A house means a condition of the soul. I build my house on the rock. If you build your house on, on sandy land, it will fall. A house is the condition of your soul. It's always a condition of your soul. A hospital is a place for the sick. A harbor is a place of rest and restoration. A vehicle is, a, a, is an object of ministry or work. So that's just the beginning to just explain some of that. Um, now, in, interpreting through the Holy Spirit. When I pray and, and God gives me an interpretation for a dream, because I've asked him for it, and for many, many years I asked him for it, and then I started asking him to show me and to teach me, and now what happens, the moment somebody sends me a word or dream that they've had, immediately, it's, it's literally as I start hearing it, I will get a scripture and I will get a picture in my head of what the Holy Spirit is saying. So he will first of all give me a scripture which is this is what it's about in the word and this is what I'm saying. And by the time, often by the time they have gone through the dream or I've read through the dream, I already know what that dream is about. Because the Holy Spirit has given it to me and shown me. And then I look at a few little details that they might have put in there and just see is there relevance in these details or were they just there to set the scene. Because many details are there just to set the scene, just to give you a greater picture. But there are some that are there to give you greater insight. And friends, if you take every little thing and you overanalyze it, you overthink it, and you, I promise you, you're going down the wrong lane. You're going to go down into deception. It's simple that even a child can understand it. Keep it simple. Keep it uncomplicated. The message is very simple. Now, and you're going to, um, it's, there's, whenever there's, okay, let me stick, let me just, um, if you do not understand your dream the first time, 
and you just cannot get clarity. Ask God to say, thank you, Lord. I, I get the message that you're speaking to me, but I'm not getting clarity on what you're saying. Will you please speak to me again? And he will give you a dream again, but it will be slightly a different scenario, different position, but the same message. Because he's so faithful and because we are in a relationship with him. And he wants us to understand because he it's not about, oh, you've missed it, that's it. No, oh God, I didn't understand. Let's reason together. Okay, and he gives you another perspective so that you can see it from, from what he's trying to say in an intimate relationship. So don't be quick. Friends, if I can say anything else, do not be quick to take a dream and to go and publish it. To tell people about it, to to don't to react on it don't you make sure that you've got the right message before you do anything else and because so many people have gone on tangents and i i see it happening every day of my life and that is why i'm teaching you on this they've gone on all kinds of tangents they've got people fearful because they have gone ahead of god and they've given the wrong information so just make sure it's god okay now the, our left brain was created for the word. And so whenever God speaks to us through our left brain, he's going to bring word to us. He's going to bring uh, lyrics of songs to us. And he's going to speak to us through the word. But our right brain is our creative side. And it's through our right brain that he gives us Im 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 visions and dreams and the messages that he has from the Holy Spirit in the picture form from our right brain. And that's really important for us to stand. And once again, it's not complicated. It's not mystical. It's not spooky. And we don't let anybody cause us to have that air of spookiness when it comes to interpreting our dreams. Because that separates people and makes them superior. And God is never superior. And the more you've grown in it and the more revelation you have and the more knowledge you have and the more you are mature in these things, the more we serve, the more we bow down, the more we lie down into the place of subservient to others to help them come into the fullness, not superior to others to look down on them. We need to understand that. Okay, now the symbolism... I want to talk about symbolism in a dream. Um, I will be sending this little manual that I've written. It's just a very simple little outline manual of dreams and visions to help for those who haven't got it. I will even email it or send it on the WhatsApp group. Um, but I want to stress the interpretation comes through the Holy Spirit. And if you need something just to help you with a little guideline, I've just given you a few things from Scripture to give you a guideline on where to start helping yourself and finding information from the word. Now the symbolism of a dream, it's, you know, the Holy Spirit is always going to talk to us about people. His relationship is with people. His relationship is with you, with your family, with the church, with your town, in your gifting, whatever he's called you to do. It's always about people. So everything in a dream is going to refer to people. And that's why it's important for us to understand that. I've already said that a house is not talking about a building. It's talking about the condition of your soul. If you dream about your mother's house, he's talking to you about things in your soul that are connected to your mom. In other words, bloodline blessings, bloodline curses. Things that he's wanting you to deal with. If it's your granny's house, then he's talking about things he's wanting you to deal with from the bloodline that's come through. And it's also in your life. So primarily, that's the first thing that he's talking about. If it's blessings, he's showing you things that he wants you to take a hold of. Things that he wants you to, to grab a hold of. And he wants you to impart into your life. If it's scary... It said he's wanting to deal with things so that they no longer have a part to play in your life because they refer to, to curses. If you've had a very God-fearing granny that used to always pray for you and was passionate about God and, and they died a long time ago and suddenly you start dreaming about them, God is saying that those dreams are still alive and powerful and he's wanting you to receive something that came through her life. Because remember the dreams and our prayers. Our prayers are still alive in heaven. They've never lost power, even if the person has gone to be with them. And now they're part of the cloud of witnesses that are allowed to every now and again glimpse at the successes of your life. And so it's really important for us to understand that. Um, trees, trees represent people. Many times in the scripture, it will compare people to trees. You know, when Jesus was praying for the man and he said, what do you see? He said, I see trees. 
and he had to pray for him a few times before he could clarify and see that he actually saw people because trees are often compared to people a tenacious oak tree the righteous are like oak trees that cannot be shaken and we see people that are called fir trees or evergreen trees that that they never they never lose their usefulness there is their zeal and excitement and then there are thorn trees people that are grumpy and people that are miserable compared to thorn trees because they're very prickly so trees are are related to people um psalm 1 verse 3 says that person is like a tree planted by streams of waters which yields its fruit in season and so we see that many times the word will talk about people as trees so when you dreaming about a forest he's telling you about a large group of people and the type of forest will tell you whether it's safe people unsafe people grouchy people good people righteous people depending on the type of trees the next symbolism in a dream is vehicles. Now, whenever you dream about a vehicle, and, and in the biblical times there weren't cars, there were horses. And so whenever you dream about anything that transports people, it's talking about your vessel or your vehicle for ministry and for work. Now, you know, we like to separate this is working for God and this is working for myself. But actually, God sees everything we do as ministry. So it is ministry for him. And then the condition or the color of the car will indicate what's happening in the ministry and what you need to be careful of. Now, direction is very important in a dream. Right usually refers to everything that is positive, that is God. That is why when, you, when you're reading in Matthew and it says pluck out your right eye, it means your eye that's been fixed on Jesus, that's a, a perceiver eye, that's a prophetic eye. If that sense, pluck it out, have nothing more to do with it. He's not talking about your physical eye. He's talking about the position of that eye, the right, the God side, and the prophetic insight. And now you've brought sin into it rather than live without it. Or that person that has been positioned as a prophetic person in the church has sinned. It's rather remove them than have the whole body affected by it. And so we see things differently when we interpret it through the Holy Spirit. The right side usually refers to the side that is right, that is positive. Jesus is sitting on the right side of the Father. And the left side usually refers to that which is wrong, which is deception, which is going off at the wrong tangent. So that's when you're talking about positioning. Um, shapes are very important in a dream. If you're dreaming at squares or circles, those are very important in a dream. Um, and so remember the shapes. It's very important to look at the colors. Now, going back to a vehicle, if you had to dream about a blood red vehicle. Now, I've, I've got some drapes here because I want to talk about colors. Prophetically, blood red always represents rage or anger. So if you're wearing blood red clothes in a dream, God is saying to you, you've clothed yourself in anger. If you've got a blood red car, God is saying to you that your ministry or the vehicle of work that you're doing is filled with rage and anger. If it is more of a maroon red, if you can see the difference, this isn't quite a maroon, but if it's more of a maroon red, maroon red represents the power of the blood of Jesus. It represents redemption. It represents the blood of Jesus. It's also the color of a ruby. And when you dream about rubies and, 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 and pearls and treasures and jewels, God is communicating about his riches and ruby represents the wisdom of God. And it also represents the redemption power of the blood of Jesus. And when we are draped in this color, the, the, the maroon color, the blue-red color, it's talking about your garment of salvation, that you're covered by the blood of Jesus. But blood red talks about rage, and talks about a spirit of rage, and talks about the fact that God wants you to deal with your anger, or with the anger that's happening in the the ministry that because of the vehicle or you might walk into your new house in a dream and the and the the color of your bedroom is painted blood red god is saying that in your inner place in your secret place you've been filled with rage so colors are very important now those are two of the colors and 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 so much of the interpretation of colors come from this the the whole rainbow because God created the colors and created the rainbow and so so much of that will also give you an indication of what he's speaking about now animals 
It is the character of the animal, the characteristic of the animal. There are good insects like bees and ants, and the Bible talks about the bees and making honey and what's good for you and, and, and build your soul. And so very often when you dream about a bee in a dream, it, it's talking about good things. It's talking about nourishment. It's talking about pollination and fruitfulness. If you're dreaming about ants, ants also represent something good in the Bible. Proverbs talks about an ant, the wisdom of an ant, and that they store things in the plenty for the time of lack. And so it's, it's talking about knowing that just like the ant, you need to make sure that you've prepared. And so there are creatures that are good, but there are also creatures that are negative, like wasps and stinging in, in, in insects. And if you have a dream about flies or wasps or stinging insects, you are dreaming about hosts of wickedness and high places, atmosphere demons that are coming against you or are coming against something, and God is saying, take authority and shut the door. And so with animals and creatures, it's depending on their characteristic, whether it's a good thing in a dream or whether it's a bad thing in a dream. Now, when it comes to animals, Jesus called Herod a fox or jackal and so an animal a fox or a jackal represents something that is negative that is sly that that comes to come and and usurp you know lions are the king of the jungle and they are the ones that when god talks to you about a lion he's either talking about being a lion in the in the tribe of jesus or he's talking to you about being deceived by the lion the enemy who prowls around like a lion but it talks about something that's a massive big strength and power and prince for good or for bad. But um, a fox is an animal that when the kings are around, the prince, the, the lions are around, that they are just, they cower away from the lion and they're very submissive. But when the lions aren't there, they come and they try and take over the hunt, the kill, and they try and intimidate the other animals. So they are an illegitimate authority trying to steal. And he was saying to Herod, you're an illegitimate authority. I'm the king, not you. And you're trying to steal away from that. And that's what that statement was. And so in a dream, when you see somebody that's a fox, God is warning you that they are nice to your face, but behind your back, they're trying to take that, which is rightfully yours. And the other thing I also want to mention, so every animal really represents what it represents in nature. A bull is, is, is a very ferocious, strong man. Um, there's a whole lot of things that I haven't got time to go through every individual one right now but i want you to understand that when you dream about an animal it's about a character now the, the two animals that we interpret wrong is the cat and the dog now the reason i say that is because traditionally in our emotions and in our logic we see dogs as being kind beautiful wonderful the 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 the, the friend of a man and we see cats as being our pals and everything else but when we interpreting a dream a dog represents somebody that is flesh driven. You know, any dog, when there's a bitch on heat, is going to charge after her because they're just driven by instinct. And, and you corner a dog, they're going to bite you. And so it's, it's speaking about rage and instinct driven, immor immoral and uncontrolled emotions. That's what a dog represents in the Bible. And so it talks about a dog going back to its vomit because even though they're wonderful and they're kind and they're good to us as humans, Give them the right circumstances, they're going to go back to dog behavior. And so it's talking about dog behavior. And that's when he says, don't throw what's sacred before the dogs. And with cats, when you see a cat in a dream, even if it's a little cat, he's talking about pride and arrogance. That's what they represent. And so it's really important that we don't misinterpret it with our emotions. But we listen and we hear what the Spirit is saying. Go back and see what the Word of God says. Now a vehicle can also represent the size of what God's called you to do. If you are at this point of time riding a bicycle, but in a dream he shows you that there's another car you should be driving. He's saying that you've limited yourself like, just like Gideon did. And you limiting yourself to what you think you can do because of fear. Because a bicycle has only got enough for one person to sit on the seat. When he says, I've got something much bigger for you. And you've got to get into the bigger thing that I've got for you. So the size of the vehicle will represent different things it'll mean affecting more people a, a, a two-seater car is smaller than a four-seater car is smaller than an suv is smaller than a bus 
And if you're driving a bus, it's it's a ministry that affects many people. If it's a big bus, it's it could be you, that you've been called to to drive the the church. If it's a, an airplane, it's talking about an international ministry because the ministry is moving. If it is a a, a ship, it's a, it's a battleship. Then God is saying there's a season that the ministry is going to go into war. You've got to change from being a passenger liner to being a warship. Um, if it's a, an airplane, that's a that's a military airplane. God is saying that it's it's a ministry that as an international ministry, but it's a season of war, and it's really important that we look at what He's saying to us. Usually, very often, um, boats talk about evangelistic ministries because they are on the ocean now that means that oceans talk about the nations the lost it talks about that and the bible often talks about nations and oceans and and we see them being used the one word is used to describe the other one so the oceans talk about the nations and the unsaved as you talk about one your mind just wants to go to all the others but i'm trying to hope that you're getting some pointers and that you can actually logically work through this afterwards and so the size is important the color is important <clears throat> if you are driving a white bus but you've got a flat wheel he's saying white is the color of righteousness and purity he's saying the ministry is righteous and pure pure but he's warning you that there's something that's causing a disturbance and you can't move because there's something so there could be a person there could be somebody that you've embraced that is actually causing a disturbance and he wants you to take a note of what is stopping the work if you're driving a bus and it's black god is telling you that the ministry that you're involved with has allowed witchcraft to come in and you've got to deal with the witchcraft okay now it says in Exodus 23, verse 27 to 28, once again, just talking about insects. Um, I will send my terror ahead of you and throw into confusion every nation and encounter. I will send the hornet ahead of you to drive the Hivites, Canaanites, and Hittites out of my way. So hornets talk about demonic flies that come in and cause chaos and confusion, and they affect the atmosphere, and they bring confusion into the atmosphere. Now, I think at this point, I want to talk about snakes as well. Whenever you dream about a snake in a dream, and I might just pause here for a little bit because many people have snakes in their dreams. A snake is talking about a ruler of darkness of this age. It is the second highest demonic um, forces, and it is intellectual confusion, intellectual deception, and it is an onslaught on the mind. We get deceived through our mind. This is the enemy's playground. So if you are dreaming about snakes, God is telling you that either you have been deceived, if you dream that a snake has bitten you, either you've been deceived, or that there is some deception coming against you and you are tempted to believe it, and he's warning you in a dream about deception. If you dream that you're sleeping with snakes, as in they're all over your bed, He's telling you that you've got into a place of false rest because you've been deceived. So where are the snakes? What is the color of the snakes? What are they doing? The dream is about deception. Any dream about snakes, God is warning you about deception. And it is deception of the mind coming against through political spirits, religious spirits, or opinions, or material that you're reading, or material that you're watching. It is an onslaught on the mind and it is deception. It was a snake that deceived Eve. Satan as the snake came against Eve. Wherever there's deception, he's manifesting as a snake. And colors are very important. So now I'm going to run through the colors very quickly. Black is always witchcraft. So if you dream about a black snake, it's talking about witchcraft that is operating in this deception through witchcraft. If you're dreaming about a brown snake, I hope you can see that this is actually brown. It's talking about deception through the flesh. Brown in a dream always talks about self-effort and flesh. So anytime you dream about a brown dog is coming at you to bite you, somebody driven by flesh is coming at you to bite you. Or you are dressed all in brown and what you're doing. He's saying you're full of self-effort. It's all about your effort. And he's wanting you not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. The next color, I hope you can see this, is orange. 
orange speaks about emotions. So when you're dreaming about an orange being clothed in orange, you are emotionally driven. You're emotionally led. You're seeing things emotionally and you're not seeing them by being spirit led. This is yellow, <clears throat> the best yellow I have at the moment. Now, in the Bible, yellow represents jealousy. Now, I know that we think that they are green with jealousy, but Holy Spirit does not interpret jealousy as green because the Bible talks in Revelations about the yellow-colored animal that was jealous. And so jealousy is represented in yellow. Now, I'll give you an interpretation of that. In my learning to interpret many, many years ago, I think this is about 30 years ago, 25 years ago, I one night dreamt that there was a lady that I met that came to say hello to me and as she walked up to me, I said hello and I mentioned her name. Now, she was dressed in yellow, her, all of her clothes were in yellow and she had a massive hat on her head and her hat, hat, was, hat was yellow. And I mentioned her name and I woke up. Other detail wasn't important. So I said, God, what are you showing me about this person and the fact that she's dressed in yellow with this yellow hat? And the first thing I did was research the name of the person, the name that I said. Now, once again, I'm going to talk to you about dreaming about people. Friends, if you dream about people, God isn't always, isn't always talking to you about that person. But God gave me a name that when I looked up the meaning of the name, the meaning of the name was, because I don't in any way want to connect it to somebody, let's say the meaning of the name was Sue. So, but it wasn't. <clears throat> and when I saw the meaning of the name Sue, the Holy Spirit showed me who he was talking about. And then I said, what does yellow represent? And so I went to the word, the way I'm telling you to, and I found that yellow represents jealousy. I've since then done a lot of research and that's the truth. And I realized that Sue was jealous of me and what I stood for, even though her mouth was very sweet. But the confusing thing is she had a massive big hat and the hat was jealous too, was yellow too. And I said, God, what are you showing me? What's relevance about the hat? Well, anytime we dream about a woman in a hat, it's talking about her covering. Her hat represented her husband. The hair of a person also talks about their covering. And their strength, if your hair's, you dream that your hair's been cut short and it's just a mess, God is saying that you're in rebellion. If you're dreaming that you've got beautiful long hair and it's glowing and strong, God is saying that you're fully submitted. So hair's really important. So I said, God, you've shown me Sue, <clears throat> and you've shown me that she's jealous, but also that her husband's jealous. And then God gave me a few other dreams. And in the next dream, he showed me crocodiles. I said, God, what do crocodiles mean? He said, things that are hidden. I said, God, I'm not really understanding this. And the next dream, he showed me sharks. I said, God, what do sharks mean? He said, it's dangerous ground and it's things that are hidden. And then the next thing, he showed me submarines. I had three dreams. The submarine, the shark, and the crocodile. Now, why am I telling you this? Because if you don't understand the message the first time, I'm asking again. So then I said, God, you were showing me a crocodile in the river a shark in the ocean, and a submarine in the ocean. It's always about the water. Water, the river, represents the Holy Spirit. So in that which is Holy Spirit, in that which is reaching the world, the ocean, there are people close to me that are reflecting one thing, but they're doing another. And three times he showed me in three different dreams. So I said, okay, God, I'm getting the message. It's very dangerous. They're dangerous people, and they're very close. I then realized that the person that he showed me in the hat <clears throat> and the yellow was somebody at that time that was on leadership, an important leader in the church, and God showed me that as a couple, they had malice and that they had issues in their heart that were very destructive and that we needed to be very, very careful. So I started praying into it and God just exposed everything. And that's how he started teaching me in the early days on how to be able to discern and pick up what he is saying. And so that was not something to go to the person and tell them. That was something to pray into. Most of these things are. God eventually exposed absolutely everything. It all came into the light. It was a very difficult time to walk through. And that person that was so jealous, it worked out afterwards, they felt that they should have had the church and it was never meant to come to us in their eyes and that's why he showed me so clearly in a dream. Okay.
Now orange I've spoken to you about, red I've spoken about, now pink. <clears throat> pink is a combination of the blood of Jesus and righteousness. So if you dream about pink, he's showing you that you've been covered by the, the blood of the lamb and that your heart is pure and you are in the process of being sanctified into the fullness of purity. Covered by the blood, he's working in your life and you're in the process of being transformed and being made holy mentally. So those are the colors. Then you get green. Now I had this green, but it's not a good green. So this is the only green I had. But green is the color of rest, friends. The Bible says, I will enter into his presence. Um, I will go into the green pastures. Um, and it's always Jesus says that he invites us into the pastures and we come in and we go out. So whenever you see green, it's talking about rest, coming into rest. And then um, blue is the color of revelational wisdom, uh, knowledge. Remember, red is the color of the ruby, which is wisdom. Blue is the color of revelational knowledge and it's the color of the Holy Spirit. Remember, there's seven spirits before the throne, so the fullness of the Holy Spirit is a combination of different colors coming together, which is the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Then you get the tabernacle colors, which is the blue, which is the burgundy red, and which is the purple, the gold, and the white. <clears throat> then I've got two shades here of tones of blue, and these are all throne room colors. This is, a, this is a, a sort of a teal green color, and this is a turquoise color. And these are throne room colors, because if you look at the description of the throne room, you'll see it's all those shades of blue. The four rainbows in the throne room, and it's all those shades of blue. And we also see the glow of glory in the throne room, which is uh, dis described as an orange glow, but it's actually the glow of gold. Now, gold is the color of glory. So I didn't have anything with pure gold today to show you, but this is the color of glory. This is blue, if you can see that, which is the Holy Spirit color and the revelational knowledge color. And silver <coughs> is the color of being redeemed, redemption, going through the refiner's fire. So when you dream about silver, it's talking about the refiner's fire. Now, if you dream about a white snake, you're dreaming about being deceived through a false righteousness false religion and so the snake is always deception and the color will tell you the area of deception if you dream about a green snake it's talking about false rest it's talking about compromise it's talking that you doing nothing when you should do something now the color that i haven't described is this one and this is purple i hope you can see that it's purple now, purple is the color of sonship. It's the color of royalty. Jesus was robed in a purple robe, and it's the color of kings. So whenever he speaks to us in purple, he's talking to us about our sonship as sons of God. Now, if you dream about a purple snake, he's telling you that you are being deceived into what sonship looks like. And so it's really important to understand that. Now, the other thing I want to talk to you about is a python. Now, Python is a very, very big snake. It's a massive big snake. And this actually represents a power. It's talking about the demonic powers, magistrates, judgmental demons that have been given a right to judge you. And they have a right whenever we're pushing back darkness and witchcraft, but specifically when we have judged others. So when you dream about a Python, it's talking about judging others and that this python has come against you and the bible says in, in 1 corinthians 11 verse 26 27 that's why some of you are sick and some of you are are weak and some of you have died or fallen asleep because that python spirit has been allowed to kill you and so these are just some of the indications on how to be able to discern and interpret a dream according to the ways of God and the, and the sources of God. Now, there will always be symbolic action, what to do, <coughs> symbolic direction, as I said to you, left or right. The symbolic colors are important. Symbolic numbers are important. The symbolic creatures are important, as I've said. Symbolic names are important. I had to look up that person's name to get the meaning of her real name. 
and then objects are important for example if you had to dream about a mirror the mirror talks about looking at the reflection of yourself and if you're looking in a mirror dimly it means you're deceived you're not seeing the truth you're only seeing part truth and it also means that you're seeing the things of god through very small limited vision a clear bright mirror talks about the fact that you've got a good understanding of who you are and what you're at a cracked mirror means that your image of yourself is broken just a few little clues on how to be able to discern um okay i've spoken about colors and silver and gold if you're dreaming about a silver snake it's talking about false redemption if you're dreaming about a gold snake it talks about false glory so the glory is always gold now there's also the jewels the jewels will very often represent something of the color that they are for example a peridot or an emerald will talk about entering into god's rest or the gift of rest um a ruby talks about the gift of wisdom um, a sapphire or, or a leopard's lazoli talks about the gift of, of revelational knowledge and going into the Holy Spirit. Um, rings talk about covenants and coming into, into um, a relationship with somebody else. And um, necklaces or jewels or crowns talks about him bestowing crown on you because he's giving you recognition of who he sees you to be. If you receive a crown from somebody else, it means other people are giving you recognition and it may not be what he wants you to receive. A diamond talks about a person that's gone through a really tough time because it says that we take coals that have been put under great pressure and eventually they become a diamond. And so when, when the Holy Spirit talks to you about being a diamond, he says he is so pleased with you because you haven't allowed the pressures of life to crush you, but to mold you into a very precious jewel. And then when it talks about a pearl, it talks about the pearl of great price and that is talking about your testimony because you see friends it's talking about the gates of heaven are pearls that you'll give up everything to buy the field that's got the pearl of great price but you are the pearl to god because Excuse me. <coughs> when there's a little bit of grit in a mother of pearl or that oyster, <coughs> that pearl, that oyster, starts covering that grit. And the more that it covers it, it develops the pearl within and so when we look at a pearl we see the ashes of our life being turned to beauty we see how in the hand of God what we saw as negative as broken as grit as nothing being turned into something of great value and that he looks at us as objects of great value because in his secret place he takes that which we see as just pure dirt and he turns it into something of great, great value. And the longer we are in that shell, the bigger the pearl gets. And so it's the transformation that happens in our secret place as we allow him to transform us and to change us. Numbers have great uh, value. Number one will talk about our unity in God, one in God. But it can also talk about being an independent person. So it depends on which what the rest of the dream looks like. Um, number two talks about being in agreement and having a witness, but it can also talk about being in disagreement if you're dreaming about two people but they're not getting on together. If you're seeing two all the time and you're busy in a fight with somebody, God is saying deal with that disagreement that you are in. Um, three is talking about the divine, the tribute, the the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but it talks specifically about the Holy Spirit. And so very often a triangle will also represent Father, Son, and Holy Spirit when it comes to an e equilateral triangle in a dream. And so, um, but it's the focus being on the Holy Spirit. Four is the number of creation. It's the number of the seasons. On the fourth day, God created um, the, the seasons. And so it's talking about the ending of the season, the fullness of a cycle, and the beginning of something new. Now, number five 
talks about grace. It also talks about fruitfulness because of the fifth day. It also talks about great fertility. And it also talks about fivefold ministry. And so now at this point of time, and it also talks about the five loaves, where God took five loaves and he multiplied them. The boys' five loaves. So it's fertility, it's fruitfulness, it's grace. And it's the, the fullness of the fivefold, which is the mantle that Jesus wore. Now that reminds me of a dream somebody had recently. And in the dream, they picked up a starfish. And it was a beautiful starfish. Now, fish talk about people that have got saved. So an evangelistic ministry is about catching fish. I'll make you fishes of men. So when you dream about a fish, it's talking about people that have got saved, people that are in the church. Daniel talks about us being stars that shine brightly, and those are the light that bring people to him. So when you're dreaming about a star fish, it's talking about Christians that are shining brightly for God, that are operating in the fullness of the fivefold ministry, that are fruitful and they are full of grace. And the rest of the dream was very beautiful because it turned into the into the map of Africa, just quickly summarizing, and then that all of that turned into gold flowing. So God in that dream was saying that he is calling people aside that are his children, that are shining brightly for him, that are operating fully in the understanding of the fivefold ministry, that are fruitful and full of grace to release their glory, his glory, into Africa. Such a beautiful powerful dream seven is the number of wholeness completeness and fullness seven days and every time it talks about the seventh day it was completed and full the eighth day is the day of new beginnings because on the eighth day jesus got uh, circumcised and the eighth is the completeness and fullness the eighth starts with the whole new cycle again it's the number of new beginnings salvation and deliverance Nine is the a number of three times three, so three times three makes nine. It is the multiplication of the Holy Spirit and coming into the fullness of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so you see the nine gifts of the Spirit, you see the nine fruit of the Spirit, and it's everything, it's the multiplication of what the Holy Spirit has to offer. Ten is the number of divine law and order and restoration, the Ten Commandments, the tithe, the perfection, the Ten Talents. So God puts great emphasis on things. Everything, if you look at the numbers and you can see the repeat of them, and then many times he will use the same number to bring you a message through the word. That's why I said to you, the, the fertility on the fifth day, the fivefold ministry, the five loaves being multiplied. And then once again with 10, it's, there was the 10 commandments, but it was also the number of the tithe. There's power, friends, there's power in tithe. Don't believe that it's an Old Testament truth. The fact was that tithe was pre-law. It wasn't even part of law. It is, a, it is an absolute release of the function of God into his fullness and the, t the, 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 the description of the 10 talents. Number 11 is always a number of transformation, being transformed or being transitioned. From 10, the number of order and law, to 12, which is the number of divine government, apostolic fullness, and symbolizes the fullness of the mature sons and people of God. Um, 12 tribes of Israel, the, the, the 12 apostles, that's why there were only 12. Um, the 12 months of the year, 12 gates, 12 pearls, 24 elders, because it represents the divine kingdom government. And so from moving from, from order and law into kingdom government, from moving from that which has huge breakthrough on earth into that which has huge breakthrough in heaven, number 11 is a number of transition. And so many times he'll keep talking to us about 11 because he's saying, I'm transitioning you into something greater that I have for you. Um, 13 is a number of rebellion and backsliding. And there's a lot of scriptures to be able to look up some of these things. And then there's multiples of numbers. 40 is the number of testing. The Israelites were in the desert for 40 years. Jesus was in the desert for 40 days. And every time they mention 40, it's a season of being tested and brought into maturity and wholeness. 50 is the number of the jubilee and deliverance. And so it goes on and there are a few others. Now, I just need to speak to you about people. Because this is really, really important. You know, many times we will see a person in a dream. Friends, because you see a person in a dream, it does not mean that dream is about them. Let me just see if I've written something here for you. 
No. Please, 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 please don't get that confused. If you dream about, let's say many people dream about me. Well, in a dream, there are three things about me that God wants you to know. Number one, it can be me, the person. But the chances are it's me with the meaning of my name or me with the position that I hold. Now, when you have a relationship, remember Jesus always talks to us very relationally with what we understand. When you have a relationship or you have somebody that you trust, that you know has been tried and tested, that is a prophet or that is a person that you can receive from as hearing God's word, then that person will sometimes come in your dream where God is wanting to speak to you and they will give you a message. So should you dream about me and should you be somebody that receives from me, God is more than likely talking to you in the form of my person or my picture as hear me, I'm talking to you, I'm prophesying to you as God talking to you. Now please don't misinterpret what I'm saying. I'm not for one second saying I'm God because I'm definitely not. I'm just me. But should you dream about me or should you dream about um, about um who's another famous chris valeton it's not because god is going to, you're going to meet chris it's because you trust him you trust his word you trust what he's saying and god is saying i'm talking to you and he's using somebody you're familiar with that you can receive from now kathleen means pure and i'm so grateful for my name because i never was when i was a young girl but i think it's beautiful today and so that's the second reason you would dream about a person what does their name mean if God is speaking to you about a person whose name means pure, he's also talking to you about the purity of white. So he could talk with through a name and he can talk through a color. Why? Why does he do this? Because it says many are the mysteries of God and we've got to go and seek them and find them. It's about making it exciting for us to discover this journey with God. I mean, he could just talk into your spirit and tell you straight. But he makes it exciting. He makes it an adventure. He does it in a form that we can understand. He's very relational and he's a storyteller. And then the third thing, it can be about the person. Now, many, many times when you dream about death in a dream, it does not mean somebody is going to die. It means it's an end of a season. Sunrise always represents something of a new day, a new season, a new era. Sunset talks about an old era closing the ending of a season if you dream about somebody that is going to die it means god is killing off that season in their life and he is breaking them through to a new day and a new understanding please don't phone them and say i, I, I dreamt you died because you're going to cause such fear in their heart and you've misinterpreted the dream if god wants to warn you that somebody is going to die you ask him for confirmation. And remember, any time we get a confirmation from God, we've got to ask for three confirmations. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit needs to talk to us. And then you can go and you can say, I dreamt about you and I want to pray for you. I dreamt that um, many years ago, I dreamt that I was praying for my brother. And um, he asked me to pray into a situation that his friend had been injured in a car accident, a free car accident. And he asked me to pray. At that point of time, my brother wasn't really serving God. And he asked me to pray about the friend. And God spoke to me and he showed me the friend was going to die. As in die. And I said, God, that can't possibly be right. And I started praying into that. And then God showed me the friend would receive Jesus. Because he showed me people coming to minister to him in hospital. And that he would stay alive long enough to be able to receive Christ. And then he showed me because of his death that many people would get radically saved, including my brother. And so my brother phoned me and he said, has God spoken to you? And I said, yes, God has spoken to me. And he said, your friend is going to get the opportunity to meet Jesus and you will get saved because of this. And then three or four days later, the friend died and he was very upset about that. And he said, why didn't you tell me he was gonna die? You knew he was gonna die. So I said, because if I told you that, you would have lost hope. I wanted you to focus in on the fact that he was going to get saved. And so friends, we have to be very, you know, if God can trust you with information, you've got to know when to speak and when to keep quiet. And I want to tell you, most people speak far too quickly. 
in my life, honestly, about 80% of what God shows me or shows me or, or leads me to or reveals to me is not for me to tell other people. 20% is to tell other people. The rest is to pray through, to get the clarity of God, to release angels into, to ask God to do things so that things can be changed and rearranged. And if you get a bad dream about what's coming, it's so that you can pray into that to change the circumstances, friends. It's not to say, oh, this is what's going to happen, woe is me. It's to change it. That's why he's trusting you with that information. So when you're dreaming about people, remember, it can be the type of person because he wants to position you to something. It can be what they represent. If you're dreaming about your boss at work, it's because he's positioning you at work. He wants to give you some information about that. Or it can be about that person. Um, if you dream about a strange little boy or a little girl that you don't know, very often God is showing you that there's a little girl. It's about spiritual go growth. It represents something is growing. It's still immature, but God is showing you there's spiritual growth coming. So if you dream about your husband holding a little girl, God is showing you that your husband is, going to, is being taken into a season of physical growth. If you dream about a little boy, it often is telling you that spiritual revival has been birthed and you've got to bring it into fullness. A boy re always represents revival. Now we're talking about an unknown, just a baby boy or a little boy. If you dream that you're pregnant with a boy, God is saying you are pregnant to bring revival into a situation. If you're dreaming about a father, it can represent your father in heaven. It can represent your physical father. It can represent your spiritual father. He's wanting you to get the message. It's a father figure that you're dreaming about. A pastor in a dream can very often represent Father God in a dream. A prophet represents the message of the Father. Often in a dream, when you're dreaming about a pastor's wife, it's representing something of what Jesus is doing, a spiritual truth, and it's repre representing something of nurturing and caring position. And so really important that we understand the right symbolism of what he is saying. If you dream about a grandchild, very often God can be talking to you about that child or about the fact that you need to pray for the next generation spiritually as well as physically. A pregnancy means God is about to birth something and you've got to bring it to full fruition. Now, oh friends, I hope this is helpful. I've already been talking for an hour and a half. Um, the same with different parts of the body. They represent what the eyes talk about. See your eyes being able to see more than you see. Nose talks about being able to smell more and not, not allowing yourself to be contaminated by things like aromatherapy and things that, that affect your senses. The mouth talks about being able to speak the truth of God. Also talks about guarding your lips, guarding your tongue. It talks about protecting what you're saying. Um, parts of the body, it talks in 1 uh, Corinthians, uh, Romans 12, that we are all parts of the body. The hands talk about functioning and, and what you do with your hands as in function and giftings and things that you yourself do. Um, re arms represent something of a mercy, caring, nurturing. Um, equipping, God talks about equipping through legs and feet. Feet talk about taking the gospel wherever you go, releasing peace wherever you go. So parts of the body also can talk and give messages. The thighs talk about your strength and being strong. The heart talks about your spiritual heart and having your heart either hardened by grief and bitterness and, and things like that or having it softened. It says that it gives us hearts of flesh in the anointing of the spirit. The Bible talks too about taking off garments, taking off bitterness, taking off malice, taking off what you've clothed yourself with. And it talks about putting on. And we put on the garment of salvation. We put on the robe of righteousness. We put on our royal robes as in our sonship. So we've got to put on the right things and take off the wrong things. If you see yourself putting on a robe of righteousness, but it's black, he's saying that you are putting on, you're garmenting yourself with that which is evil and wicked and not of him. So it's very important that we understand what the different things are represent and what the different things show if you're dreaming about a house it's the condition of your soul the bedroom is your intimacy place of intimacy with the father the bathroom is a place of being washed and sanctified the toilet is a place of being purged the dining room is a place of feeding other people the lounge is a place of resting and relaxing and so it literally is what it represents and many many times it's what it represents to you that matters in a dream now I'm going to mention one more thing 
and then I'm going to two more things and then I'm going to end on that in a dream water represents the Holy Spirit and dirty water represents the wrong spirit and so if you swimming in dirty water is telling you that you are entertaining and feeding yourself with the wrong spirit it's contaminated water if you're in crystal clear water it's the Holy Spirit and so whenever you dream about a swimming pool or any type of water that's crystal clear he's talking about the Holy Spirit and if it's contaminated or dirty it's the wrong spirit and um, and also things like a hospital can mean a church where they do a lot of deliverance and caring for people a hotel can be a place where people come to be restored and to come and refresh an airplane can be a place where people come in from the nations they come and rest they get recouped and they go off to the other nations it can be a church that is able to embrace those type of people an abandoned factory a factory talks about a church or, or, or a place a community where there's work to be done and an abandoned one means that they're not doing what God has called them to do now I want to just talk about intimacy in a dream whenever we talk about intimacy God says that the covenanting of a man and a woman is the act of, of being intimate it's the act of making love and so when you in a dream and you suddenly dream that you are embracing or kissing another person another man or another woman God is not showing you that you are having an affair remember a person who's having prophetic dreams has got a clean hands a pure heart and is not contaminated so they don't see anything through contamination and the ways of this world they see it through the purity of God now in God intimacy or lovemaking is pure covenant building so God is showing you that you are busy coming into a covenant agreement or a contract with another person the rest of the dream will tell you if it's good or bad if you have this dream where you're kissing another woman's husband but um, the rest of the dream is indication that it's negative he's warning you that that person who you are going into some form of an agreement with is not the right thing if you're dreaming about it and it's a, a right dream and it's positive and there's fruit of it and the rest of the dream is the indication of what's positive God is saying I'm blessing that contract go with it and remember the foundation of any contract that we go into business or else it says do not be unequally yoked and friends I want to tell you this if you go into a contract a partnership a business deal where you are co-laboring and co-partnering with another person who's not a Christian the fruit of that will be disastrous you've got two different visions and you're going to pull in two different directions no matter what a good opportunity it is rather work for them or get them to work for you where you can keep your autonomy in God and you can still be who you are without having all the legal things connected or get them to work for you where you still have the say to say it's okay or it's not okay but don't you go into a contract where you give away half the authority into somebody that's unequally yoked with you I really trust that I've covered this well I knew that I would have very little time to actually interpret dreams today and that's why I'm going to do it next week but I needed to give you a foundation I think in the summary take it to the simplest the things of God are so simple a child can understand it always take it to the simplest um, The color is important, the details are important to give you a little bit of a bigger picture, but always take it to the basic message or the simplest form. Ask yourself who, when, what, why and how. Don't just rush off and react the way you think it should. You're not going to interpret it here, no matter what's stored up here, this is worldly knowledge and experiences, you're going to interpret it from the spirit. That's where you're going to interpret. Ask the Holy Spirit for the spirit of wisdom. As I said to you, when it is a prophetic dream, God almost immediately shows me scripture to connect with it. It like happens immediately and he gives me the interpretation of the dream. I don't even have to dig. The moment you've got to start digging, you, you're going into dangerous grounds because you're trying to find a logical explanation for it. You can always go back to the word. It has to be able to align and agree with the word and it has to be spirit led if you're looking for the meaning of a names please do not go into anything that's connected to new age or any form of a Bible interpretation that's connected to philosophies that we are not in agreement with look for the original Hebrew meaning or the original English meaning and keep it simple
The message is keep it simple. It's not mystical. It's not woo woo woo. It's not superior. In fact, it's just simple little. You know, I think if you get a children's book and you see how simple the stories are, that's how you're going to interpret it. Very basically, simply. And the moment you've got to dig deeper than that, you are treading on dangerous ground. And I want to say to you, most people that are interpreting dreams are not interpreting according to the Holy Spirit. They're interpreting according to intellectual understanding. And it's really scary because they bring confusion. It's not clear. It's not clarity. And people don't know where they're going. Do not rely on your own interpretation all the time, friends. You're going to get deceived. Since, write down what is self-explanatory. Pray and ask the Holy Spirit to interpret and let your handbook, primarily your first handbook, be the Word of God. And then, if you want to find another one that you can trust, I know there are many others out there. I know John Paul Jackson wrote one. Um, one that you know that the person is tried and tested, and you know that what they stand for is truth and righteousness, joy and peace, then that's a good guideline. Bless you, friends. And I really want to say to you another thing. You know, a lot of people have Christianese a lot of stuff. Please don't take a Christianese book. Go and get the original English or the uh, original um, Hebrew or the original names because the Holy Spirit is going to draw that. You know, names are very important to God. Right throughout the Bible, he told people what to name their children or they named their children according to the meaning. Names are very important. So getting a good old um, Hebrew interpretation or even a strong concordance or getting something that's just got good old-fashioned original meanings of names and you know many names and if you look back in the old English and that they were named like that because Smith was somebody that worked with their hands and so a lot of things like a coppersmith or a goldsmith was a person that worked with their hands so that meaning has got something to do with your work it's so it's uncomplicated the key for today uncomplicated basic colors are important direction is important and the, the what is this actually about? A lot of coloring in, but the coloring in there is just to set the scene. Get the basic message. And then out of that, ask God what you need to do with it. Most of the time, it'll be to pray into. And pray in tongues, then you don't get your emotions confused. Occasionally, it might be to tell somebody. And friends, occasionally, too many people are wanting to just speak it off when they don't have any idea why. And then, should it be something that is a warning or correction, he will confirm it three times with you, like I told you about the crocodile, the shark, and the submarine, so that you can actually go further with that. His prophetic of dreams come to exhort, to comfort, and encourage, sometimes to correct things in your life, and sometimes to warn. And if it is a warning, ask him what he wants you to do with it. I pray this has been helpful. I'm sure there's lots of questions out of this, you're welcome to send them on WhatsApp because other people learn from the questions. And next week, I will take some of your dreams, as many as I can, and I will help to interpret them through the Holy Spirit and through the Word of God. And hopefully, it will bring clarity to you. God bless you, friends. Keep it simple that a child can understand it. Until we meet again, goodbye.